Okay, folks, today I want to do some primer tests with 125 grain supersonics. That's been our last two videos, right? Two videos ago, we looked at the Sierra Tipped Match King with Winchester 296 and 300 MP. We really got pretty poor standard deviation numbers on our velocity, right? Our velocity was kind of all over the place a little bit with both of these powders. 300 MP was better than 296, but neither one were stellar. The next video we shot Vitivori N110 and Lulgun. Vitivori N110 had outstanding standard deviation numbers. It only had one of them that was over 10 and that was an 11.0. So that's very consistent velocity. Lulgun was the other powder we tested that day and it was terrible. It was really, really bad. So that's what's led us to today, which is some primer tests. Because my current thinking is that N110 you know, is an extruded powder, easy to light, and the CCI 400 primer we were using, which is a standard small rifle primer, had no problems lighting it off, but with the others, with our other powders, which were all ball powders, spherical powders, it just wasn't hot enough to do the job. That's the current theory, and that's what we wanna to test today, is I wanna take Winchester 296 and run seven different primers with that powder. I also wanna take Vitivori N110 that we saw really good performance with the standard primer and I want to run that powder with all seven primers. So that is the basics of today's video. The seven primers we've got are uh, the S&B small rifle primer. This is a very cheap inexpensive option. Love to see them do well. Next is the Federal AR small rifle match primer. Third is the Winchester WSR, the Winchester small rifle primer which for some strange reason, I've never used these. The other four are all CCI. These are ones we've got a little bit more experience with. First is the CCI 400, which we've already shot, which is their standard small rifle. The BR4, which is their bench rest small rifle primer. The CCI 41, which is primarily what we've shot in 300 Blackout. This is their uh, you know, 5.56 military style primer. And last is the CCI 450, their Magnum small rifle primer. Now with this seven, I cover just about everything I want to. The only one that's missing is the Remington seven and a half. I just wasn't able to get a hold of any in time. So we'll probably test those at some point. I just don't have any on hand. And seven primers is, you know, quite enough to be getting on with. So if we go back, we're gonna use two different bullets. So our 125 grain tipped match king, this is the one where we shot Winchester 296. I want to shoot this exact same combination. And I think what I want to shoot, just to make it easy to remember, is 19.0 grains, which is 0.1 grains above this guy, which was our best group with that powder, 0.95. So eh, yeah, right in here, we're going to shoot 19 grains. So we're probably looking at 2130-ish feet per second, something like that. Out of my 10.3 inch barrel, that is. So that's our first load. And we're going to stick with the same overall length we had shot in that video, which is 2.260, or I'm sorry, 2.250. Only thing that's going to change are the primers. The second, so Vitivori N110 is our second powder. Vitivori N110, we didn't quite get up to the velocities I'd like to see. We, we never hit 2,000 feet per second. And I want to jump up a little bit higher. Let's shoot 17.5 grains. So it would have been the next step up on this target. Should get us to right around 2,000 feet per second. And that's also a pretty nice full case of powder. So that's what I decided with there with N110. We're gonna shoot 17.5 grains. So with the Spear TNT, we're shooting an overall length of 2.100 inches, just like the last video. So for brass, I've already got these guys all primed and ready to go. I wanted to do that before I turned the camera on so I could focus, didn't get anything mixed up, right? There's a very high chance of mix-ups here with this many components involved and I wanted to focus. So these guys are all ready to go. This is brand new Gemtech brass. I thought about maybe switching and using some once fired for this test, but I didn't. I don't know, we'll see how it goes. So Gemtech brass with our seven primers already in there and ready to go is standing by. So that's really it. All of the little things about the bullet and how they seat and all of that has been covered in the in the last video. The uh, interesting part of this video is gonna be on the range and after the range. So we're gonna cut this part in the beginning quite short so that we can hurry up and get to the good stuff. So I am going to start out with Winchester 296 and our tipped match king. And I need to start weighing some charges. So I don't remember back to the to the videos, what we did 
in those as far as crimp goes. But here, actually with both of these bullets, I am given a little given a little bit of crimp with the Leaf Factory crimp die. Seating like usual with our Forster Ultra Micrometer seating die. And then given light to medium pressure there. It's not nearly it's not enough to uh, make any mark or anything visual that you can see, like, oh yeah, there is the crimp. Just more of the just give it a little squeeze. I think that's about all I have interesting to say about the reloading process. So let's just skip it and get out to the range. Okay guys, we're going to start out with the 125 grain Sierra Tipped Match Kings with Winchester 296. I did just shoot a group of five shots just a second ago to get the gun warmed up and hopefully get rid of any you know variations we might have seen in these first in this first group or two. So the gun's warm. Let's see where it takes us. I'm going to go ahead and bring the scope down three quarters of a minute and let's go left three quarters of a minute. And our next primer is the Federal. Did you guys catch that? I just got a slam fire. Holy smokes. Okay, everybody, let's all just take a deep breath here. Let's just take a minute to chill out because no matter what I just said, that was not a slam fire. This is the first bad turn in this video and there are a couple. This is our first problem of a couple. So I had this double fire and the very next group when we were shooting the Winchester primers, I had the exact same problem. I'll tell you what, let, let's run through these guys a couple times at full speed and then frame by frame a couple times. I'll let you guys see what I see on the film and then we'll talk about it together. So unfortunately, I was filming at 30 frames per second, which is very slow. So between frames, like in the first incident, you see a frame where there's a piece of brass coming out. That's brass number one. The very next frame, the second piece of brass is already out of the gun and flying behind it. So neither one really caught the critical info we needed. So I stopped and did a test at this point. After the second failure, and I really wasn't sure what was going on, I stopped and did a quick test with the rounds we had loaded. I All of these primers, I dropped the freaking bolt on these guys a freaking, it's, it felt like a billion times. I could never get anything more than a superficial dent. So I don't think you need to see me yank on a charging handle for 20 minutes to see absolutely no result. It was a tiny little dent in all seven of the primers. None of them were significantly deeper than the other like none of them seemed softer and getting more dented and I just I kept working on the same primer over and over like I hit each of these primers at least 10 times each and could never get one to go off just dropping a bolt on it so that's the first thing that makes me think yeah that the primers really had nothing to do with this the second is that my CMC trigger gave me some other problems there were a couple times where it did not reset and I had to charge it, you know, do the whole dance to get the, the round back in the magazine and everything. That happened two or three times today on the range. So I think either something's jacked up with my trigger or it was just a slam fire that was my fault. Because today I was kind of trying something a little bit different with this gun, right? This little SBR is hard to get a hold of. 
in a scenario like this. I've got one of those MFT minimalist stocks on it, right? And basically the toe of the stock just sits in the rear bag. And this particular time I had a Coltac flat bag and this protector rear bag sitting on top of one another here. Yeah. So th this guy was sitting on this dude and that's what I was using. And I had my bipod extended a little bit. So I was just trying to get the gun a little bit higher to get some better shoulder positioning than what I've normally get with this gun. And I think it being higher and the bipod being a little bit more springy because of that additional height. I, I was getting a lot of gun movement, right? A 300 blackout supersonic is not exactly going to hurt anybody, but it does have a little bit of recoil. So I think, and also I have a very light trigger finger, right? I'm not like, I'm not trying to bend the trigger. I have a very light touch on the trigger. So it's, it's not an unheard of thing. This, I'm pretty sure it was this same gun we had, we were shooting it on a table that was very, very slick. And we were able to get it to uh, bump fire on me a couple times in videos a long time ago. But I think that was what was going on here. And it's nothing to freak out about. I don't even think it's primer related. Now this caused us another major problem. These two problems are very closely related. The second bump fire, the one I had with the Winchester primers happened to hit something very important. This is the head off of the uh, tripod I was using for the target camera. That tripod now looks like this. So I missed my target camera by about three inches. It tumbled off into the grass, of course. It stopped recording and corrupted the file that was recording at the time, so I don't even have the cool shot of the shot and this thing tumbling on it. So we're just screwed. And the worst part about it is it's the middle of summer here. The weeds are growing up like crazy. I was not able to see the camera. It was behind some weeds. So I didn't realize it was no longer there. So I went forward, shot the rest of the video, and we have zero footage on the target end of things. So that's where we stand. What you've seen as far as range footage goes is pretty much all I've got to show you because the rest got screwed up. All right, so here, here's what we ended up with as far as the target You know, if this were any other time, I would just reshoot this whole video, but it's video every day, August by God. So I can't afford to scrap this much time invested. So let, let's try to slog through it. That's our target. It looks like shoes in a box, doesn't it? So the one big orange shoe is our first bullet, the 125 grain tipped match King. The other shoe is the 125 grain TNT. So, of course, let's start with the tipped Match King. This was our Winchester 296 loads. The groups weren't half bad. So, our worst group was 1.69 inches. It was our first group with the S and B primers. But that's not bad. I'm sure I'm still getting my eye in, you know. We're just getting started, gun warming up. Followed immediately by this four-shot group that was a half inch. And this four-shot group that was 1.23 inches kind of stuck around that same area that between an inch and a quarter to two inch, or I'm sorry, inch and a quarter to inch and a half range, which is about, you know, what we've seen good shooting bullets in this barrel shoot about an inch and a quarter. This is about what we were expecting. None of the primers did a poor job Our half inch or that was a fluke. Let's be honest. If we shot big enough groups, they would probably all even out. I don't see much of anything that makes me favor one over the other that much. Just eyeball testing, you know, arm's length, eyeball testing, I think accuracy was pretty close. Now, speaking of problems, so I mentioned that we just kept having problems, right? The first time I shot the tipped match king with the CCI number 41, I did not get any velocity readings. I wasn't paying close enough attention to my, to my uh, chronograph. You know, you got to shoot through the little window and I got a little bit off to the side and it stopped reading on me. So at the end of this, after I finished the whole target, I ran back inside here to the bench. I loaded up five rounds with CCI number 41 primers and went back out there because I really wanted to get velocity data for that CCI number 41. Keep that in mind. This is going to be important because I'll tell you what. So we let's go ahead and look at the chart for these bullets. Okay, here's the chart. You see the velocity up the left our different primers across the right. The blue dots represent the shots that got read by the chronograph. 
So, of course, the Federal and the Winchester only got four dots, but, you know, it is, it's what we got to work with. So, the standard deviation number is right beside the dots, you know, right beside each group of dots, and a lower number is good. That means our blue dots are closer together and there's less variation in our velocity. All of these were pretty crap. So, there was a little bit of a trend here, maybe. So, our thought going into this was that the hotter primers would light off this Winchester 296 powder a little bit better and should result in better standard deviation numbers. I think we might have seen that here. You know, our S and B, our Federal AR match, our Winchester, our CCI 41, all those kind of standard primers. We had those, uh, eh, you know, standard deviation numbers, most in the 20s. The CCI 400 was an 18.6, which isn't awful. And I guess the CCI 450's number wasn't particularly good. But I guess what I'm getting at is the BR4 and the 41 were the best standard deviation numbers. 450 wasn't great, but, well, if you saw yesterday's 223 video, the 450 is just quickly becoming a bad word around here. We're not having good luck with it in anything. Now, that may just mean we're looking at the wrong things, but it just seems to uh, perform poorly. So, okay, so the other thing to recognize on this chart Look how freaking high that CCI number 41 velocity is. It averaged 21,019 feet per second. The next highest velocity was the CCI number 400 at 2,051 feet per second. That's a big difference, bro. Like that, that's a ton of difference, man. So the difference with those rounds are, you know, those are the ones that I ran back in here and reloaded. So let's, okay, let's take what we just learned from kind of from the chart. Let's look at the groups one more time. So remember our, our BR, yeah, the BR4 and the CCI number 41 had the best standard deviation numbers, but it didn't really translate here to our 100-yard groups. Looks pretty much the same. And our Federal, which was our sixth worst standard deviation number, this little red number here is the rank of standard Federal and Winchester, were our two crappiest standard deviation numbers, and the Federal shot that group. So... If the, we then go on and add in the fact that the five rounds that I came in here and loaded up later, then go out and shoot like 70 feet per second faster than anything else has, I didn't come in here and screw up the powder charge that bad. There's no way, right? I didn't screw up overall length that much. So I think there are just, there are forces, there are larger forces at play. We're messing with these primers, which is a minor variable, but we've got major variables that are affecting us. So you take those five rounds that I ran in here and loaded really quick, that would be the temperature of the components. You know, they were in here inside of the nice 70 degree house. Outside on the shooting range, it was 90. You know, it was a, it was a warm day. It was super muggy. We were expecting storms. So maybe the, you know, low pressure was coming through or something. So whether it's the environment or something else, I think that, uh, we may be on a wild goose chase, you know, wh which is good. You know, I guess that's good. If, if we can establish that, yeah, the primers don't matter that much. That's, that's an awesome thing. You know, this isn't a waste of ammo. Just if we find out that none of it really freaking matters, because that, that would certainly be good to know. Let's move on to our 125 grain spear TNT. The groups were a little bit worse. Our worst was the uh, CCI number 400 with a 2.34 inch group and a 2.31 inch with the Federal, which kind of had this guy. If you, yeah, like here was the, and if we go up the shaft to the tip, or perhaps the head, that little guy, what the heck was that doing? But overall, you know, okay-ish groups, inch and a half to two inch average, something in that range. Kind of like our other bullet. The groups are similar sized. You know, they changed and morphed around a little bit, and we had, you know, different velocities. The BR4 especially tried to, Tried to put together a nice group, you know, stacked four over there. So that wasn't bad. That was our second best group with that bullet. There was our best, a 1.28 incher up here with the, with the S and B. So group size with five shot groups here, you know, look, looking at, you know, it's what we got to work with. Uh, I'm not seeing a whole lot that would sway my opinion on the accuracy side of things. Now the chart for this powder is a whole lot different. Look at that pretty thing. Look at that pretty thing. So, you know, that's one of the main reason we tested this powder. It's because it gave us very good standard deviation numbers in previous testing, and we wanted to see if that held true for all primers. 
which really makes this a fascinating target. I mean, it's clear as day there, right? Our four lower numbers, our, our four lower, you know, the four primers on the left, those blue dots are stacked pretty nice and close together there. All of the standard deviation numbers are single digits between five and 10. So powder burning well, giving us very consistent velocity numbers. As soon as we jump up the BR4, the CCI 41 and the CCI 450, it immediately opens up. The 41 is not too bad. The, that standard deviation number of 12.1 there wasn't too bad. It kind of stacked three close together and then had two that opened it up a little bit. But for some reason, this powder just really did not like the BR4 or the 450. So if we back out here and look at both, you know, both charts, they don't have much in common. Those cooler primers worked with, you know, Vitavori N110 better. So we really didn't have a whole lot of velocity fluctuation. You know, that 1950 to 1975 range is where most of them landed. So I would be really fascinated to run this with some more extruded powders. I'm trying to think what our extruded options are in uh, 300 Blackout. Reloader 7, IMR 4227. There are a couple. IMR 4895. It would be interested to run those because, you know, if this holds true, then I need to leave, you know, I shoot a lot of CCI number 41 primers. That's not really the best choice. I'd be better served to either go with the 400 or one of the other uh, cooler burning options, perhaps. And over with Winchester 296, I mean, it. I guess it's exactly the opposite. You know, the cooler primers definitely did look a little crappier and BR4, 41 and 450 look better. So I'm thinking what I may end up doing, what I may end up doing, sticking with CCI 41s for, uh, for the ball powders and going with the 400s or one of the other brands for my extruded powder work, I guess maybe. Does that cover it? I feel like there's some major like uh, thing I'm forgetting to talk about. If you haven't been keeping up, so we, we did a 223 primer test video yesterday. Today is this 300 blackout primer test video. And then tomorrow is gonna to be another 223 primer test video. So there's a lot of moving parts right now on the primer front around here, so. Once I finish tomorrow's video, it'll be good to widen the, widen the view a little bit, take all three videos in context at the same time, compare and contrast and see what we come up with. And like I said, at this point, I'm wondering if we're, we're just gonna find out that it doesn't freaking matter. You change some minor thing and the gun wants another primer. You think you come up with a rule or a general guideline and then the very next group completely blows it out of the water. So this has been Frustrating, but in, I guess, a good way. I didn't really like all of these bull crap that I had to deal with in this video with the with the tripod and the chronograph, but we made it through in the end. So I don't even, we weren't even on the range long enough for me to give the basics information about the gun or anything. I will have an extensive list of parts and links to go buy stuff and all of that crap down in the description. Make sure you check the description if you got any questions about any of the crap we use today. If you'd like to support the channel, you know, maybe chip in a buck or two to the tripod budget, head on over to patreon.com slash reloading. We are up to, yeah, we're up to 58 patrons already. I'm freaking blown away. I only set it up like two weeks ago. So thank you to everybody who signed up. And for those of you who haven't, get your butt over there, pledge a buck a month or something. Come on, join the party. I'll see you guys tomorrow.